everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 21. As, as always, the popular opinion show because we discuss popular opinions as always. I'm also here with my two boys as usual. We got Amok, what are you saying, bro? Another week looking forward for this show. Can't be better than that. And Jax, what are you saying today? Much better than yesterday after the poor performance. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, let's get cracking. Let's, let's get cracking. And guys, if you are new to the show, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share. And of course, this week we'll be speaking about the match against RB Lightship, that horrible defeat that went against um, West Ham. Of course, the contra the, the of course the comment coming from Mino Raiola with Pogba's future being done at Manchester United. And of course, we'll look at the Premier League roundup of last weekend's fixtures. And of course, we'll end it with the preview against Manchester City, the Manchester Derby coming up this weekend. Straight up, guys, let's go straight into it. We are out of the Champions League. We're, we're back to Europa League, you know, back to, like I said before, luckily it's not on Chanel number five because we'll be representing that fragrance. But luckily we're on BT Sport. But other than that, we are out. We are out. Disappointing. Hurt. Hurt. Really hard to watch yesterday's match against RB Leipzig on an empty stomach. During that first what, first 13 minutes, I just thought to myself, I am not watching this on an empty stomach. I'm going to start making my food. I left <laughs> in the first after the 13 minutes when it was 2-0. I just got up, went to the kitchen. I don't care if I missed like 10 minutes of the match because it wasn't worth it anymore. I had my food, sat down, ate, didn't even bother anymore. But guys, Oli, again, Wally out. Wally out, like I'm, I'm done with this guy. I've been done with him last week. I've, I've been done with him for a very long time. To to watch that match, play seven defensive players, and still get trashed defensively within the first twenty to thirty minutes, it says a lot. It just says a lot. Seven defensive players. You had three centre backs. Well, you had Luke Shaw. Well, you have two centre backs, three full backs, two defensive midfielders, and we still couldn't defend against RB Leipzig. We couldn't do that for, for the first 20 minutes. Appalling, appalling. And as always, there is always someone to blame if things go wrong. And it has to go back to Oli. A little bit goes to the players for not be, being able to execute Oli's... I don't know if Oli had a plan, but to excuse, execute some kind of plan. But apart from that, it's all on Oli. It is all on Oli. And it's time for Oli to stop packing his bags, you know, in advance. Because you can't have a manager that's take you to the Champions League and get you knocked out straight in the group stage and just go back to the Europa League. And at a serious club, when they see stuff like that, they get rid of the manager. If Real Madrid right now, they, they will be playing today and they're sitting third. If they don't win this match, they go out. See, has gone. They don't play games. Barcelona lost 8-1 to Bayern Munich the very next day, out. Messi wanted to leave um, Barcelona. The director of football said, if it's him, he's going. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is serious clubs, like. But yeah, guys, let's go straight to that match, man. Amok. We guys, in this episode, you are allowed to say what you want. There is no limit. There's no restriction. If you want to swear, swear it out, bro. Because I I can understand. Like, yeah. I can understand. Amok. Nah, no, we gotta keep it clean still. <laughs> just fans, isn't it? But yeah. Like you you literally just said it all. It was very disturbing much to watch within the first 20 minutes. And I just want to make a reference to what Maguire said yesterday after the match on this interview. He said they were not ready within the first 20 minutes. They were not on it for the first 20 minutes. But it's your last Champions League match. Mm -hmm. You have to win this match for you to qualify for the last 16. And you got in a way, you are Manchester United. Why are you going to play? I'm away March without being ready in general. So for me, all I see is they from that match was lack of preparation. I felt like the players, the team itself, everything was just shambles. And what I think got everyone excited was because we've been coming from behind more in away matches. Even do you, do you one goal from one goal to two goals and win they win the game? I think that motivate the players and make them do like oh do you know what we can do whatever they actually show try to prove it yesterday but it did not work all it needs to prioritize what competition what 
Like, what's the tactics you play in certain competition? You cannot play Champions League football and play five at the back, like seven seven defenders, and lose three no, three nil within what sixty six eight minutes. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. And like I said, it's really <clears throat> appalling. It's I can't emphasize too much because. I was so upset that I actually had to do so many things just to take my mind off what happened yesterday and I found myself in a better place right now but I feel like it's a poor performance and all the tactics, game management or plan wherever he puts before the match and after the match haven't been working, we've just been getting let off because of the players that we've got, the individual abilities and I think the whole team itself got gassed over that and yesterday that just proved what I said here last week what if we don't win the Champions League match? What happened to Oli and what happened to Manchester United? And I'll just have to ask you that again. What happened to Oli after yesterday and what happened to the club itself? Because this is one thing that all the fans have been looking forward to. Champions League football. Where is the Champions League football right now for Manchester United? Go on. Back to Europa League. <laughs> you know? And Jax. Um, <laughs> yesterday was a big gamble for Oli. Because the way I see it, emotions to one side. Yesterday I was very angry, so I'm so happy this video is being done a day after. Um, and it gives you time to reflect. To reflect, treat, to calm treat. down, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Oli played similarly against PSG away from home. It was a risk, and we won. People were saying he was a tactical genius. People were saying we were counter-attacking counter in a very good way. We played a bit genius, well. <laughs> Now, with RBL, it didn't work. And for me, we did play too many defensive players. It was a risky way to set up against RBL, given that it's the last game and we needed to draw. You can't play defensively if you need to draw. It's too, too, too risky. And if he had won, we would have been saying, well done, Oli, but he lost. Um, at the start of the group stage, it was a group of death. And I feel like... We was never really guaranteed to go through to the last 16. I was very hopeful, but it was never a guarantee. And we're back in the Europa now. Um, we deserved to lose yesterday, definitely. Definitely. It was never a penalty for us to come back into the game. Greenwood on the defender, I can't remember who it was against. Con 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 what's the name? Uh, Konate. Konate, yeah. But it was never a penalty. So we shouldn't even have had that foot back into the game. No. RBL didn't even play too well. They played... Okay, they took their chances. We had even more chances than them. We, they they opened us in the first half. We like. should have, we should have played open football, open match yesterday. Like you see, because you said defensive football, that's the whole reason why we lost the match. You can't go to German teams and play defensive football. It happened to Tottenham. It happened to Arsenal against Bayern Munich. You don't do that. These are teams that they train themselves and drill themselves. Just to pass the ball around so you can't play like you can't go different around it they'll open you up open play the same open game with them and take your chances the same way they might expect to take the chances and that's what i felt like all they should have done yesterday play open football take your chance and let them take the chances we've been saying it for a long time well in relation to old trafford we don't want to be seeing two defensive midfielders in there but even away from home at rbl Pogba or Van der Beek, I feel should have started because Van der Beek especially mm. for ball retention. We can't mm. have only three attacking players Could on the be. pitch and then the rest are defensive minded players. The balance is not right, unfortunately. I know and I still understand that against PSG, multiple times we've played away from home, counter attacking football and it somehow worked. But it was a risk that worked for Oli. PSG don't it play it didn't work that way now. Play, PSG don't play possession possession football. Really, truly, they play good football, but PSG play counter attack a lot, just like Manchester, because mm. we play similar type I'd of football. They play, more, they play football. more attacking football, but they play Much more attacking. More, but they don't play tiki taka like you don't play passing football like Leipzig. Leipzig play with the ball better than PSG. That's what you don't understand. It's just that they haven't been really improved it this season, but they are very good on the ball. That's why we found it hard yesterday to even click within the first 20 minutes anything in that match. And it's let's, upsetting. Let's talk about the first 20 minutes. Defensive positioning <clears throat> of, of Arrow and Bissaka, the defensive positioning of, of 
there was two chuckle brothers, um, Lindelof and what's it called? Fucking two hoovers, bro. Dyson and what's it called, bro? Lindelof got smoked yesterday. Yesterday. Bro. And Harry Maguire, a joke because of a captain. You know what? Just get rid of him as a captain as well. Like that second, that second was enough. No, the goal that we conceded, the, the third, third goal. The third. Guys, you can say, oh, David De Hill, but that there was Harry Maguire's fault. But let's talk about those defenders. We had Luke Shaw, who came back from injury, went straight into the team. And that's one thing that annoys me with um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. What, sorry, Wally. Yes. Um, that you, you bring in a player that's been injured for four weeks and put it straight in. And then you take off your best left back, Tellers, at half time. And then you say that you, Luke Shaw was only going to play an hour. That don't make no sense. The defensive position of players being open, you have you have um, Aaron Wan-Bissaka tucked in, helping and defending Lindelof because why? Because of course, anything that goes over the top of Lindelof's head, he won't be able to get it because why? Mm -hmm. Those two defending centre backs are slow. You have Tellers as well tucking in, Shaw tucking in, just leaving space, ex um, leaving space exposed for people like Angelino to just you know, uh, what's it called? Um, what's the word again? Capitalize on it, and that's the reason why we conceded those goals because why defensively position wise tactical wise in terms of defensive shape which is not good enough even though i've said that before that we're not good enough when it comes to moving the ball forward we're not good enough defensively we play too much um zone of marking especially for set pieces and that's been a big problem that's why we've been conceding a lot of goals from set pieces because of ollie i'm sorry again wally <laughs> with his um zone of marking it's just hurting us but those defensive position of those guys was to horrendous like you can't defend like that and that again again and again and again i keep on saying before this goes straight back to what happens on the training pitch and i said it again and again they don't train they sit down and tell stories Ollie sits wally sits down and tells stories to these people about how he scored a goal in 1999 <laughs> and how he comes on the from the bench and score goals they don't train they don't train at all all they do is shoot balls in bins and etc and see but guys, let's talk about the defense position. Harry Maguire, especially. Wan Bissaka, of course, with his mistakes. Lindelof, Shaw, Tellez, even McTominay to an extent. What did you think about the defense? Um, the defense wasn't great. I'd like to highlight the third goal with Maguire's mistake at the front post. You know, I've been saying I want Henderson to have a bit more opportunities to compete against the hair. But I want to back the hair this time around. I don't feel it was his fault at all. Um, Maguire should have been there to intercept the ball. Mm -hmm. True. Like he just was a bit confused, apprehensive. Hesitant. Like, hesitant. I don't Jess, know can I say something? That's, the, that's the captain. He never commanded it. He never said, my ball. Yes. He's exactly. the captain. Exactly. And of course, that was a miscommunication there because, of course, you never said nothing to De Gea, but De Gea, get it, my ball. Mm -hmm. De Gea never heard anything. He left the hair stranded. On stranded. Because and that's De Gea what was making an attempt to come out. Yeah. But and he just saw there. Maguire there. Uh, yeah. And then Maguire stopped. And it's a shame because Maguire's had a few good games, actually, coming off the bad start of the season. He's had a few games, but again, it's just showing that he's not exactly an £80 million centre-back. The rest of the defence didn't play particularly well either, to be honest with you. Um, overall, just a very bad defensive performance. We deserve to lose. You know what, yeah, what, what baffles me? When is um, Maguire's trial? Because he needs to go. I like to know when he's tried because he's still here, bro. It's, it's been like four months since he's been arrested and he hasn't had his trial. What's going on, bro? Greece, take this guy right now. <laughs> like, just come, take the guy, <laughs> make us fence, come fly over, get the guy, put him in handcuffs. Take him back to Greece and lock him up. Because, again, 80 million, you know. 80 million, but you must get on about Pogba. But this is 80 million. 80 million defender that can't defend, can't sense fear, rubbish leadership at the back. He can't, he's not a captain. And I, I thought he was a captain, you know. When we first signed him, I said, I think this could be a potential captain. But I was so wrong. I mean, what did you think about that defensive shape yesterday? I've always had doubt in the defence, actually. But like Jake said, they've been giving us glimpses of positive like football. They've been defending very good this past few games. Mm -hmm. And it's just a shame that we got to talk about defend like this after yesterday. And <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Spiritual. It's just shameful to see we considered three goals. They were all passes that just came from no other don't know where the passes came from. In that different corner, they would stand straight to defend on them passes that came in. They were not balls that you could say they are going to get a goal from. You know when some team play and build diff, build attack and attack you, you know how they, they are going to score. Now, when Manchester do a counter, or PSG go and pipe your name or do whatever they do, you know you're going to get, you're going to concede. They did not play like that against us yesterday. They took the chances. So, you playing against United and taking chances, that just proved that our defence is actually, I don't want to say the word, but they need to do better. They are shit because they're not being trained. Like, I don't want to. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to say the word, but they have to do better. And as much as I want to be really upset with the defenders, I can just point the finger at one person. Only in the, my reason is this. Like I did that. That's why I actually went in for the defenders first. I feel like they all poor yesterday. Tell us here all the six, seven of them that played this. They were all poor. Because if you play like that in the first twenty minutes and concede two goals like that, there must be something wrong with you lot. And all he needs to do better, like Jake mentioned, you can't go away and play the same way you've been playing against every other team. Sometimes it's good to change things up to defend yourself in case anything goes wrong. See, I was trying to go for the win. But I did not see us playing yesterday. Like we went there to get the win. You're supposed to go for the win. For the win. You don't play for mm -hmm. draws. You don't play for draws. And to that, get a draw, you plan to win. And that's, <laughs> that, exactly. that's, exactly. that's the reason why I go blame Oli. We set the team up yesterday and knew he was going to lose. And... and I just want to say something that you said earlier on regarding Maguire's words about how the team, he, they weren't ready. That is a joke. It's a joke. How can you tell me you were, the you team wasn't, wasn't ready, ready in the first 20, 20, 20 minutes? Bro, that's the last game. You guys are supposed to be ready before the whistle so A week close. before that. Before even P before the, the West Ham League. The West Ham uh, game. Uh, as soon as we won the West Ham, they should just all be focused. No, like, no, well, let's pump up. Let's turn up. Turn up. Do you know what? It's, 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 it's ironic. Excuse, is it excuses, Of course it is. Because it's excuses. the press conference before the, the Leipzig game, Maguire and Ole were both there talking about how they need to start very well. Want to take, grab the ball by the horns, do all of this nonsense. You can't tell me in the first 20 minutes you wasn't concentrated, you wasn't ready, you wasn't at the top of your game. I'd rather you say we were just awful and they were better than us. Just give us the real, and you know? What you say just remind me, you know, when you tell a girl that, when girls come in, can you say, oh, don't watch out. I'm hard you, you know, man, will harm in that. And you come here, you go to like two minutes, three minutes, you're like, you're done. And you say, JSC, and you said you were hard. That's what all, that's what. But before the match, uh, we're going to go with the tactics here. This, 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 this. Then what happened in the match? <laughs> two minutes, yeah? Nothing. Two minutes. Nothing. 20 minutes, we go packed in two goals. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> I don't understand what's going on with this team, but we need to do better. Much better. And who was the donkey of the match in that match? Oli. Me, I went for Wally, bro. It should be Oli, because the tactics, everything, the plan, the game plan yesterday was poor. Everything was just wrong. It's all on him. It is all on him. Just sad that we are back into Europa League. We'll be we'll be back with Arsenal at the end of the day. We'll, we're back with Arsenal. I'm very sure these Arsenal, you Arsenal fans are very happy that and guess we've what? joined you guys guess with what? Spurs. Guess what? This time I'm not going to the semi-finals in Europa. We're getting kicked out early. <laughs> Remember I said it. Unless we bring Poch in by that time. Something different, yeah. And again, another game where we start off poorly and have to come back. How many times are you guys going to... You only ins. How many times are you going to accept this? The fact that each game we play, we start poor, we get packed in and make our way back. And that was only going to last for a certain period. And yesterday was the end. Like, especially in the Champions League, good quality teams, good quality teams in the Premier League. If you start sloppy, that's it. You're done out here. We move on straight to the next match. Briefly, we talk about the West Ham game. Because we've, we've gone straight, we've gone a bit far off in this recording. That West Ham game where we came, we came back, we was 1-0 down and then we came back and won 3-1. Again, another game where the first half we were so poor. We were so poor. And another concerning game as well. And that there is the reason why we lost yesterday as well. You know? True. Starting off poor. Ollie fans, you need to give me a reason. You need to give me a reason of why we should keep him. Because how many games do you need to see us play poor and just scrape it? 
We just and that's what we've been doing throughout the start scraping, of this season. Scraping game. Coming back and winning. Mm -hmm. And that can only take you too that far. And at the end of the day, like I said before yesterday, was the end. How did you feel about that match, Amok? I felt relieved at when it was 90 minutes. Yeah, because we won. Because we won. But in the first half, oof, it was Navi. And I can't really emphasize too much on the game because we've said literally everything we can't say about the match between Manchester and West Ham, about the yesterday match, what happened yesterday. Going to games, we put better preparation. We are united. When you hear this club being called in the media, they don't just call them Manchester United. They say we are united. It means a lot. So if you're going to represent the club, you should represent the club that like we are united, not just like in random club. Coming, we need to play. We need to play very good football. Like, like what was you saying last week? Aggressive, not pragmatic. Progressive, Aggressive, and aggressive football. Yeah, mm -hmm. not pragmatic, right? Not pragmatic. Yeah, was like in. Like I said, I can't emphasize too much. It was a poor, very poor match. The only positive thing that I can take from that match against Western is because we won. And based on individual ability, not the manager himself, only thing that he did was to bring players in. Mm -hmm. But individual ability that made us win that game against West Ham. It's true. And yesterday just proved it right. It's true. And it's not like we scored those goals based on a team effort goal. No. It was just individual brilliance. Lovely pass by um, Henderson to Tooth and Mosca for Bruno for Bruno to slot it into Paul Pogba. But that was just Paul Pogba's quality and Bruno's intelligence. The second goal, the, last goal the second goal was um, Teles crossing it in because I believe that was Shaw. Shaw would have not got that guy. Shaw would have not <laughs> crossed it in. Teles with a wonderful cross, finding Mason Greenwood and Mason Greenwood with his acrobatics. Um, Dennis Bergkamp esque goal. I'm not gonna lie to you, that was beautiful, by the way. Because at the end of the day, where he stopped, where he got his first touch, he was facing his own goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his own. He was facing Henderson to end up spinning my man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and slowing that. That's individual brilliance. Even Marcus Rashford's goal, my man's individual. I love line, that pass. Pass, I love that pass. That and luckily, pass. for the first time again, when because I thought he was gonna miss anyway, because when you give Marcus Rashford time. Mm -hmm. To think, he does. He misses because he missed that first opportunity. Very good hit the post, the post. easy goal, score. Division. Hit the post. Second goal, he chipped it. But again, Brilliant. that was just individual brilliance. Nothing that comes with the team's team effort and uh, the way the team set up to score that goal because it wasn't it. Individualism FC, you know. <laughs> we Man United, like I said before, it's just individualism, like. They're a big fan. I believe they're a big fan of Margaret Thatcher because Margaret Thatcher is the one that introduced individualism and got rid of trade unions. That's not us right now. We're not. We're not a union at all, bro. <laughs> but yes, yes, we were gonna move up because checks. I mean, I believe I need. Oh, see how you felt about that match. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, quickly it was a uh, again another poor start. We need to. Do something, maybe in training, maybe with the boys, maybe it's just a bad luck. You keep saying training, nothing's gonna happen in training. Boy, we don't know, do we? But they um, get sessions for training. <laughs> Things should happen within the sessions. So, yes, as I was saying, um, yeah, we need to start the first 20 minutes of the games, we need to be starting much, much quicker, faster to the ball. We need to be more on point because the first 20, 30 minutes against West Ham was. I don't know what was happening. The one good thing I'd say, I don't want to just everything to be negative, it's like Oli watched our video. He didn't actually start with two holding midfielders against West Ham. And this is vital because with this individual brilliance coming out, we know that Pogba scored a screamer, Rashford scored a beaut, and also uh, Greenwood scored an amazing goal. Three individual great attacking players made the difference. These players need to be started more regularly. We can't be having holding midfielders. If we do, it takes one more attacking player away from the team. And if Pogba wasn't starting, Let's Van der Beek wasn't starting, who knows? We might, we might have lost that game. Yeah, Van der Beek started and got taken off at half time, which really annoyed me. It really, Oli, Oli's Same. decision making and stuff. But Same. then Bruno Same. came Same. on and we won the game, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I believe we would have probably done more better. More with, better with Van der Beek. Beek. Is it set up? Who, who did he do? He, he brought on Bruno, he brought on Rashford, yeah, and took off. And a bit, but McTominay was playing shit. What happens if we're in a game? McTominay was playing shit. 
What happens if we're gonna get injured? Yeah, we're stuffed, isn't it? <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. We can't <laughs> depend on one individual. It should be, like you said, not um, what was it called? It should be united. Yeah, just play, Everyone play your best eleven. That's all. Your best players will get you more points across the board of the season. You know, and very lastly, mm -hmm. Pogba, Pogba's goal was beautiful. The West Ham fans, for some reason, were just booing him all game. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, you know why? Because it's Pogba. Because <laughs> <'cause> it's Pogba. <laughs> media, media, the media, the English, English media, 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 media hate English what media. The most okay. hate. I don't know why people hate Pogba. You got people, fans that don't. The most hate people hate Pogba. The hate Pogba. Yes. West Ham, they're not even our ops. I don't really understand. I don't understand. But too. anyway. Great goal from Pogba. I'm just going to say this. It looks like he's probably going to leave at the end of the season. Definitely. Shoot, definitely. I would like to see a player like Ryan Gravenberg come in from Ajax. I know he's only 18, but for me, he's a quality player. Who do you think could replace Pogba, possibly? Um, it would be Jack Grealish. Jack? Okay. Jack? Okay. That's the only one. They, the, the team want to buy in it, but they don't want to cough up the money. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah, that's what they want. Guess what? Brexit AFC, they want to sign a British players that will please appease these English fans, of course. Yeah, because of course they want to get rid of Pogba. There is no coming back with Paul Pogba. I, 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 it doesn't matter. Paul Pogba can score a hat trick. Yeah. Even the goal that he scored, I looked at the comments and it was still negative. The goal that he scored yesterday, still negative. Yes, you will never said. receive yes, love. Yes, what said about right. Pogba's mm -hmm. goal mm -hmm. was like a little ricochet. It mm -hmm. was just some of a goal. That like, was, which means it's not a team effort. Mm -hmm. It was just a love end. And Pogba was, eventually Pogba put his head on the ball and which he's got the ball from. But it was not like a proper creative yeah. type of game or how Pogba got the goal. So we don't score from creativity. But no, but he changed the game when he came on. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, he definitely changed yeah. the game. But they were saying we don't score from creativity. Yeah, we don't. That's we really true. don't score from creativity. Only once in a while. So, yeah. Individual brilliance. Moving on to Paul Pogba's agent, <laughs> Mino Riano. <laughs> of course... <laughs> He came out with a statement saying that um, Paul Pogba and Manchester United are oh, it's over, and how of course uh, Manchester National bet that they, they don't want to lose a bet for free, and how he's he's unhappy, and how he's not allowed to express himself and be the player that he's going to be. And obviously, this some of those things are quite true. Paul it's Pogba true. playing at, at a DM, he's not allowed to express himself. He's not even allowed to get his normal haircuts anymore. He can't express himself. I don't blame what Mino Real because at the end of the day, there's, there's things, there's things that I've noticed about our club. Upstairs, there's problems, but this agent keeps on coming up to us and releasing things about Oli, about the board and etc. And these are some true things, but some of you fans they decide to ignore these things and just say, "Oh, get him out! He's disrespecting the club. There's no one bigger than the club. This and that, X, Y, Z. Get him out! Get him out! He's." He's useless, he's blah, 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 blah. Bro, fam, let me tell you, no, 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 let me finish off. Yeah. You said something that just triggered me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times did Ben Winnie give in to you? Um, Twice. Twice. But, no, no, but obviously top rest. It's Wayne Rooney. <laughs> he proved himself. <laughs> Papa hasn't proven himself. So that's why Rooney can get away with these things. Like I said before, like, with Paul Pogba. Even though his, his agent said that he was willing to go, most of you fans that said he needs to leave, the guy finally admits that he's going to go. It's a problem now. You're, you're bashing the guy that you said you wanted to leave. And when he says, his agent says, I, I'm looking to leave. You're bashing him. I don't get it. And like I said before, me, I believe there's no coming back for Pogba. He has to go. Like, as much as I love him, one of my favourite players, he will never get that love for Manchester United. The club fans. itself it's is Manchester United have never... And supported or came out to the me on the media and support or stand up for Pogba. And uh, can I say one more thing? So with this board and it's the way the um, the club runs, they don't come out and make statements. They don't ask Pogba to make statements. They let Mino Raiola to say all they need to say. They never nip it in the bud. The board don't the board and the club don't come out publicly say and say anything. That, that says a lot about of our club. It says a lot about, about our club, like how much they, they care about the football. Because they don't. Because how are we having week in, week out, international break in, international break out of Paul Pogba wanting to leave, not happy, blah, 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 blah. Why don't you bloody sit him down and ask him, yo, Labile, what's the problem? How can we amend this? How can we fix this? Like, come on, make statements. But they don't. 
Yeah. They don't care. They, they gave him nothing. That's the they gave him hundred mil. Professional no. comes out and says, organize the uh, media and says, you know what, Paul, bro, I've had enough of this. Like even the, even that shit captain that we have, that captain of our, our captain, <laughs> what's his name? Maguire. Maguire. <laughs> as a captain, you think <laughs> me as a captain, you can go and talk your nonsense with your agent? I'll grab you by the corner, put him in a headlock, and say, bro, you got two choices: sack your agent or tell him to shut the f up. True. Yeah, I'm the captain of this club. You can't do that to us. You can't do that. To us. If you're unhappy, come out and say you're unhappy, or sack your man and sack your agent. Because the club you does things to by do sentiment. Like Where's the sentiment for when it comes to it, dealing with Paul Koba? Where was the sentiment to come when it comes to dealing with all the other? He came members? from Juve. He's been winning trophies. What made the trophy has he won? Has he won the Premier League in this country since he came to United? No, but he's always making headlines. He's no, it's not. I can't say Pogba. What his manager is doing is wrong. Back in like six, seven, eight months ago, I would say yes. But after this season, what I see him going through, he is a better. He's getting older. He needs to enjoy. Pogba should go. James, what did you say the last game, two seasons ago when he had his best season? That yeah. last day. Yeah. That last day told me everything. Mm -hmm. He had his ago. best season, yeah. But one years. racist white fan. Shout at him when the man's fasting. That day, I was like, no, what problem you have to do? Right. Was just one man. That beat you. Like, I, I, I had, had a good beat for but, but it was one specific individual that was actually putting finger, putting yeah. finger, and then said, Oli, get him out! I remember that. Yeah. It was um, one individual. Yeah, with Pogba, I feel like his agent's toxic, you know? I'm he's happy toxic. for him to cut. He's toxic. Because every time he's just making, releasing statements, I'm not hearing anything else from other agents. It's just this Raiola guy. Yeah, but Van der Beek agents support with other weeks. Yeah, <laughs> just two weeks after he started. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. These agents are getting a bit braver, but this Raiola guy has been toxic that, for <laughs> quite a while. Um, Pogba needs to go. It's not a surprise. I don't understand why people who don't support United are getting passionate and angry about this. I watched Sky Sports and I saw Carragher oh, yeah. Yeah. and said he hasn't done anything he should go. I was just thinking, mate, shut up. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pogba's done... He hasn't reached his potential, but he's True. done better than half of the squad throughout the last three, four, last three seasons. So True. I'm happy for him to leave. He's wanted to leave. Please, United, use your brain and sell him in the summer. Because if not, we're going to lose him on a free agent And later. do a better deal. And now we use that piece to get another midfielder. But I have no as confidence. simple as that. I have no confidence but if that you have... will sign a replacement. Because what I saw in the last... Van der Beek was his replacement, are you saying? If that could be his replacement, and they won't sign anyone else. Just get the money. I have no confidence that when the club sells Paul Pogba, they're replacing him with quality. Because that, like I said... I don't believe the club anymore when it comes to transfers. I'm going to be on that one though. That anyway. last day of the transfer window said to me that mm -hmm. Manchester United message. are not serious. They're liars. They're, they're, liars. They're, they're liars. They've been lying to us, bro. They say all of this what you want to hear, but they don't do it. They don't do it. They're liars. So when they sell Pogba, if you're hoping that we'll get someone like Jack Grealish, hoping that we'll get another player that can re replicate what he does, mm -hmm. we won't. We'll probably get a mediocre player. Sure. That's probably available on a free. I'm hearing about this Shagaloo guy from AC Milan. Who? I, I can't pronounce his name. But <laughs> AC I, I think it's um it's Shagaloo, Shagaloo. Shagaloo. Yes, Hakim something Shagaloo that from AC Milan. Is he one of the old stars? No, no, he's one of those guys that you don't know what that some guy that's really good at free kicks and etc. He's a midfielder, of course, and a playmaker as well. So they're looking to get him on a free. Another free chance, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how that's game, sense. when we get for free, how long is he gonna stay with us? Are we gonna be able to build a future around this player? No, a team or something. Not, we won't do anything. So why and if you losing a player like Pogba, like what one he of said in one Jack, what Jack said, go in the market, search for someone like he made an example, Grealish. Get someone like his quality to replace Pogba. We all need a Van der Beek, which we know when you go one or two heads, he does what these players can do you know you're always going to have that little edge and that's why we've been coming from two goals down to win because we've got these players in this team without these players i don't think only would ever do what we've been doing for the past few days or um, a few weeks no it's evidently clear so if you're gonna, gonna get rid of pogba make sure you replace pogba with someone that can come into this team and create an impact just the same way bruno did that's one thing, but I'm really not, uh, like I'm saying it, but I'm not confident in my own voice because you said it. Uh, what happened What, what happened in the last transfer window just proved everything. 
like it took so much from us as fans our confident that that expectation what are we expecting right now nothing i don't expect anything so to mention <clears throat> i don't know it's hard when you talk about manchester as a team in the structure the only thing that's been keeping us going is the way the players been playing and coming from two goals down in win i love the throw come back fc come back fc mm -hmm. i like that flow but that's not that shouldn't be us every away game we can't be doing that that shouldn't be every, even at home it. was rough right. we struggled to remember we haven't really won at home only had one 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 game we've won most of them if not all our away games no? we've, yeah all, all of yeah, our away all. games except for yesterday yeah, in Champions League, yeah. And in, in Samu, we lost them away as well. So we yeah. lost two away two games. games in, in, I mean, like, that's all in the Champions League, but for some reason, they keep in good form in the Premier League. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's move on to the um, the uh, weekend roundup as we come close to the end. Highlight of my week, of course, you know, my favourite club in London, you know, Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal again, getting moved to by Tottenham. Oh my God, who saw Thomas Partey? When he was trying to, much, when he that. was injured, and it, you didn't see him, he was injured. He was the trying to call him. Arteta threw him back. He was like, get back <laughs> the, guy, the guy couldn't even run. You know, like, no, screw this. I'm going back. I'm, I'm, I'm. He walked off, and that's when they conceded the second goal. The moment they conceded the second, it was Joe Hector Bellerin. Five foul throws this season. Five. How are you a professional footballer and you've done five foul foul throws? You know, five checks. Bellerin. Man, that don't do that in Sunday league, you know. Trust me, like not even a fourteen-year-old kid does foul throws anymore. That stuff like that is for like people who still learn the game at a young age. When you're like eight, eleven, twelve, you learn how to play the game. You're eighteen. That that day I can expect foul throws, but when you turn fourteen, fifteen, and you've been in, in an academy for that many young, you've been at Arsenal academy for like the age of fourteen or sixteen. Yeah, and you're telling me you're they're giving five foul throws this season. You know, he just does this. <laughs> That's it. Joker! Like, hey, no. hey, that was one of my best games as well, if not the best game. Mm -hmm. What happens when Harry Kane or Son gets injured though? Because they're playing so well, mm -hmm. they're sitting there at the top of the table, if not they're top. No, they're right? top, they're still top. When one of them get injured, what's going to happen? You know, they, no, they will continue doing what they're doing. That, guess what happened? What? Mourinho takes over the media. <laughs> complaining. That really does what he did. I've been hard Mourinho in the media recently. Mm -hmm. Complaining. Because mm -hmm. everything is working perfectly. Of course. Of course. Wait, like you just said, wait till something goes wrong. Then Mourinho takes over the media again. Kane's during injuries. <laughs> yep. And what was your game of the week, Amor? Of course. Come on, let's go with the Arsenal match. Arsenal. Like, like, as soon as the game finished, I had to go watch Troops TV straight. <laughs> I know. Like, I had to watch it straight. again. He went I've been here for one month. Mom's, you know. <laughs> and I ain't seen my team win again. <laughs> hey. Like, yeah, you know what? You know so funny? He came on AFTV from the third yeah, so, so, so. <laughs> Came on AFTV that day. Robbie, straight, what's going on? Been to the Troops. And the Troops, yeah, I've been here for one month, Robert. <laughs> one month, like, Robert. Bellerin, I don't know. I think it's having a very, very poor season. It's, it's not a poor season. It's a thing that I feel like as a player, if I, if I was to play professional football and find myself in this situation, I would actually ask the club to go to find myself. You can find a new start. Because I ain't seen the players a bad player. And that used to be all a great mm -hmm. on proper leaving the club. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing for Bellerin. Okay. Because yeah, every Arsenal fan are on to yeah, Bellerin. Like, the things are hard. It's spiteful. Man, they call him a model, you know. They like, call him a clothing model, bro. So, like, you know. I understand what the team is going through. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, us as spectators or fans, we actually say certain things that I believe that we shouldn't say about individuals. We can say whatever we want to say about Oli. But certain things you, you can't hear us saying really spiteful things we watch jokes mm -hmm. but i've seen spiteful things for bellerin this week this weekend and it hurt me to say that Arsenal fans should do better mm -hmm. i understand it's football we all going through the same thing but Arsenal fans gotta do better i'm gonna speak on behalf of the Arsenal fans as well they kill pulis out as well bro like that yo, Arsenal sitting 15 just like we was two weeks ago One five you know two weeks ago we was all ollie out with uh Mikel Pulis out, bro. No, I think Arteta is a good manager, you know. Arteta, bro, can I say something? He's a better manager than 
Jolly. No, 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 no. No, he's better than Jolly. Let me tell you something. You see Mikel Arteta, um, Mikel Pulis, aka Mikel Moyes. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, he does the same thing that Oli does. Play seven defensive players, three at the back, two holding midfielders, no attacking players. You yes. got, you got, you got. What's it called? Um, we don't have options. Uh, um, what's it but called? Arsenal ain't got the players. Abang- 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 you got, you got the Gabonese at um, a, a bungalow. Hall, and they still, play oh, they still playing. No football. They had seventy percent. Or oh, 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 69% of the football match against Tottenham is still lost. That's t- no, no, but that's what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. They need also. No, 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 no. Since that was inevitable because why? Tottenham always was always going to sit back and let Arsenal have the ball and get them on the counter attack. That's typical Mourinho football. So they was always going to have that possession. Hence why you need another creative player. Yeah, yeah so but also to yeah, also, yeah. That's you that's know? on them. That's on them. They don't that's have on the players. To, that's, that's, that's on them. them. That, that, I'm with you on that one. On the manager. That's on them. That's on the manager. But that manager. That's on just the manager. Like Doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, he's just trying to make things work. Play seven defensive football players. Yeah, don't. Just don't do well. You've got the you got a bungalow, a bungalow hall, uh, which is aka a bam, a bam man playing left back. He's he's gone. Uh, he's, 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 he's turning to Roberto Carlos, fam. Did you see the team? Mm-hmm. I really for for the first time as a football fan, I actually felt sorry for DT. I felt sorry for DT this 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 last weekend. Yeah, I saw DT's um, video. Like, with, um, he was Robert. sad. Like it's not a good thing. Like fans, we go through hell. We experienced the same thing as we're experiencing, so we understand what you fans are going through. But the team itself needs to do better. Mm-hmm. Like the manager, I don't know what you got to do, but the team itself needs to do better. They need more players, man. Their squad's not great. Cool. Let's wrap it up, guys. Of course, we got the Manchester derby at, at Old Trafford. Old Trafford, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. It, this will be a, a, of course, it will be a, probably a game where. It's useful for Man City because of, there'll be no fans, of course, and Man City are used to having no fans in their stadium. So it'll be easy for them. They'll, they'll kind of feel like they'll be at home. <laughs> you, you the, the, no, empty hat, isn't it? The empty hat, yeah. as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So they'll, be, they'll feel at home. They'll feel like they're the home team. They're like, yeah, there's no fans. I'm used to this. <laughs> like, we're used to this at home. So in my opinion, I don't know. After this defeat, I feel like only might pull a miracle. Yeah, because when his ass is up for the line, remember, he becomes... He becomes Oli Guardiola, as I was saying to you guys earlier mm-hmm. on. So, like, you never know. I feel like we might win, but then again, I won't be surprised if we lose. And if we do lose, guys, will he get sad? Mm-hmm. Or they're still going to wait because they don't know what they're doing. Do you not remember before? The yeah. international break, Ed, ba- Ed come just out backed him. him. No, yeah. that, that's just normal procedure. Ed will say, I'm backing you, but behind behind closed door, he's telling his man, you know I'm going to sack him in two months' time. I don't see that, no. I don't see that, no. No, I don't see that. Do you know why I'm this saying the same, no? This is the same guy. I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm with you on this one. I don't want to get my hopes up. Jags, this is the same guy that Mourinho was thought he was going to talk about transfers. Man sat down and said, you're gone, fam. What do you mean? I don't think he's going to get sacked anytime soon. Yeah. He might. He's not going to get sacked. I don't think as it, I said, he needs to win, lose five in a row before it's going to sack him. Cool. And, and, and it's going to come to him. What do you think of the match? You, um, Arsenal? I mean, sorry, Man City, Man City at home. Uh, I'm not, to be fair, after yesterday, I'm not confident <laughs> at all. Mm-hmm. It'll be great to see a win because in the Premier League now, all I care about is three points. I don't care about performance anymore because with Oli at the wheel and with... We have good, a very good first eleven, but the squad for me still needs a lot of improvement. So I'm not expecting anything from that game. I want to go for a loss and yeah. be hopeful for a win. That's all I can do. Okay, and Amok? I don't want to say a loss because I'm trying to be optimistic, but I can't even say a win because I'm trying to be realistic. So I'm just going to say draw. <laughs> draw. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I, I, don't, I, I, I have a feeling that we might win because of what Oli does and when he's, when he's backs up the wall, isn't it? So, but at the same time, I won't be surprised if we lose, guys. I won't be surprised at the end of the day because we don't have the best track record against Man City in the last past well, years. Old Trafford as well. We'll and I know that Ali will play five at the back against Man City because he's done that before and it's, it has worked for him, for him, but he never learns that these people will finally catch you up, catch on to you. Like, no, like it would work, though. It would Lampard. work. No, no, like Lampard Lampard did. It would work against Man City. No, no. Only works We've done it three times against Man City. We've won. But, you know, after, when you do it the fourth time, Pep will find you out. Just like Lampard found him out. Yeah. Just like um, what's in there, RB Lightship, you paid three at the back the first time. Cool. Three at the back the second time, you found him out. So, yeah, I, I won't be surprised. 
definitely going to be further back. But yeah, guys, of course, we have come to the end of the show. It's been lovely, as always. It's been a pleasure, guys. Do remember to subscribe to the channel, of course. Remember to like and smash that like button, as always. Share as well, guys. And of course, I'm Luke. Where can the people find you? On Instagram, prettyflavka underscore 16. And Jax, where can the people find you? Uh, Instagram, Jax underscore United. And if you're looking for me on the IG, I will underscore Spice. Same for the Twitter. Do remember to follow the official Instagram account of Red United, which is Red United TV one And of course, guys, we will see you next week. And as always, try to keep it united as much as you can. I know, it's hard. You see, he's <laughs> saying it with a little bit of hesitation. Yes. Like... That's what the, that's what Manchester does to you. That's yes. what the Champions League coming out of Champions League. That's what it does. And yeah. of course, remember to keep it red united. We out. Peace.